I've met a lot of men who were motivated to commit violence just like me. And without exception, every one of them was deeply involved in pornography without question, without exception, deeply influenced and consumed by an addiction to pornography. There's no question about it. Let, let's go back then to those roots. First of all, you, as I understand it, were raised in what you consider to have been a healthy home. Absolutely. You were not physically abused. You were not sexually abused. You were not emotionally abused. No. No. I, and that's part of the tragedy of this whole situation is because I grew up in a wonderful home with two dedicated, loving parents, one of five brothers and sisters. A home where we as, our, as children were the focus of, of my parents' lives, where we regularly attended church. Two Christian parents did not drink, they did not smoke, there was no gambling, there was no physical abuse fighting in the home. I'm not saying this gratuitously because it's important people understand this. That basically, I was a normal person. I wasn't uh, some guy hanging out uh, at bars or a bum, or uh, I wasn't a pervert in the sense that you know people look at somebody and say, "I know there's something wrong with him," and just tell. I mean, I I, I was essentially a normal person. I had good friends. I I uh, I led a normal life, except for this one small but very potent and very destructive segment of it that I kept very secret and very close to myself and didn't let, let anybody know about it. And part of the shock and horror for my dear friends and family when, years ago when I was first arrested was that they just, there was no clue. They looked at me and they looked at the, you know, the, um, the all-American boy. I'm trying to tell you as honestly as I know how what happened, and I think this is a message I'm going to get across. But as a young, uh, a young boy, and I mean the boy of 12 or 13, certainly, uh, that I encountered outside the home again, uh, in uh, the local grocery store, or the local uh, drug store, the softcore pornography, what people call softcore. But as I think I, I explained to you last night, Dr. Dobson, in an anecdote, as young boys do, we explore the, the back roads and sideways and byways of our neighborhood, and oftentimes people would dump the garbage and whatever they were cleaning out of their house, and from time to time we'd come across so, pornographic books of a harder nature than uh, more of uh, graphic, you might say, more explicit nature than we would encounter, let's say, in your local grocery store. And this also included such things as, let's say, detective magazines and uh, more hard Those that involve violence. Then. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, I, 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 and this is something I think that I want to emphasize is the, 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 the most damaging uh, kinds of pornography. And my, again, I'm talking from personal experience, uh, hard, real personal experience. The most damaging kinds of pornography are those that involve violence uh, and sexual violence. Because the wedding of those two forces, as, as I am know only too well, brings about behavior that is just, it's just too terrible to describe. Now walk me through that. What was going on in your mind at that time? Okay, before we go any further, I think I mean, it's important to me that people, that people believe what I'm saying, to tell you that, that I'm not blaming pornography and not saying that it caused me to go out and do certain things. And I take full responsibility for whatever I've done and all the things that I've done. That's not the question here. The question and the issue is how this kind of literature contributed and helped mold and, and shape the kinds of violent behavior. It fueled your fantasies. Well, in, in the beginning it fuels this kind of 
thought process. Then, it, at a certain time, it's instrumental in what call it would say crystallizing it, make it in, making it into something which is almost a, like a separate entity inside. And that in, at that point, you're at the verge, or I was at the verge of acting out on this on this kind of these kinds of things. Now, I really want to understand that you had gone about as far as you could go in your own fantasy life mm -hmm. with printed material, and you made or printed and video or film Photo, or film photos, magazines yeah. what have you yeah. and and then there was the urge to take that little step or big step over to a physical right. uh, event. and it happens it, it happened in stages gradually it doesn't necessarily not to me at least happen overnight my experience with i say pornography generally but with pornography that deals on a violent level with sexuality um is that once you become addicted to it, and I look at this as a kind of addiction, uh, like other kinds of addiction, of addiction, you keep, I would keep looking for more potent, more explicit, more graphic kinds of material. Like an addiction, you keep craving something which is harder, harder, something which, which gives you a greater uh, sense of, of, of excitement. Until you reach the point where the pornography only goes so far, you reach that jumping off Point where you begin to wonder if, if maybe actually doing it will give you that which is beyond just reading about it or looking at it. The way you did it. Listen, I'm no social scientist and I haven't done a survey. I mean, I, I don't pretend that I know what John Q. Citizen thinks about this. <clears throat> but I've lived in prison for a long time now, and I've met a lot of men who were motivated to commit violence just like me, and without exception, every one of them was deeply involved in pornography without question, without exception, deeply influenced and consumed by an addiction to pornography. There's no question about it. The FBI's own study on serial homicide shows that the most common interest among serial killers is pornography. That's true. The, those of us who are, who have been so much influenced by violence in the media, in particular pornographic violence, are not some kinds of inherent monsters. We are your sons and we are your husbands. And we grew up in regular families and pornography can reach out and snatch a kid out of any house today. He, he snatched me out of my home, it snatched me out of my home 20, 30 years ago. And as diligent as my parents were, and they were diligent in protecting their children, and as good a Christian home as we had, and we had a wonderful Christian home, uh, there is no protection against the kinds that the kinds of influences that are loose in the society that, that, that tolerates 